Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at how to paint scuffed black armour for goths orcs with an interesting purple tint to make your boy stand out on the tabletop. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'm going to be painting all of the armour panels that I want to be black with Viejo model color black. But you can use whatever black paint that you'd like. You could use the Battle Black from Games Workshop if that's what you had. I just happen to like the Viejo one. And I've thinned this down with a little bit of water and you'll probably find that over a black primer you can probably get away with one coat of this paint. You can do two thin coats if you want, but basically all we are doing is changing the finish of the black paint in case we have to go back and touch up any mistakes. For the next step, we're going to start highlighting the black areas. And to do this, I'm adding some Nagaroth Knight into my original black. Uh, I decided to make a bit more of an interesting tone with the black here of this Goss armor. Uh, it's inspired by the heavy metal recipe, and I think it adds a nice, interesting tonal variation that not many people do, as most people normally go straight to gray or straight to black. But adding some purple into the black uh, really allows for some nice, interesting color mixes. And I'm doing this roughly 50-50, but airing a little bit more onto the purple side. It's hard to tell here, but it is still, still readable as a purple color here. With this highlight color, I am looking to volumetrically highlight the panel. So what that means is I'm going to be doing a soft transition uh, focusing on how the light would hit the model. So for this bit here on his pistol, I have uh, highlighted the bottom half uh, with this color, uh, working downwards towards the bottom in my brush strokes, uh, because where the light is gonna hit, it's gonna catch that very sharp edge at the top. Then the next immediate bit is gonna be directly in shadow. And as this, it's as due to the angle, it's going to start getting lighter and lighter towards the bottom. Uh, I've wet my brush after the pass to go backwards and forwards once there's no paint on it to feather out a soft transition. So with this color, it's quite subtle going on. Uh, but here I am picking out the very top of the armor panel here as this is facing upwards towards the sun and this mm -hmm. is exactly where the sun's going to hit this the strongest. We're then going to get an area where it's quite dark and then we're going to go light again right at the bottom. And I'm almost sketching in this highlight. Um, the color is quite a subtle change and I'm just doing this enough that it, um, it picks out a bit of a area where there's a tonal variation. Uh, to give this panel a bit more interesting to look at. If you hold this under a light, you will see that the black paint sort of shines a little and where those shiny areas are, that usually gives you a really good idea for highlight placement. For the next highlight, I'm adding some Celestra Grey into the mix and this will quite heavily desaturate our previous color. And as you can see, we can really see ourselves building up a purple color here for a highlight. Uh, there's no exact ratio uh, for what I'm doing for this highlight. I think I'm making this roughly 50-50 um, Celestra Gray and the previous mixture. Uh, but your mileage may vary and you might want to go slightly darker or slightly brighter depending on exactly how much of the Celestra Gray you use into the mix. So what I'm doing with this color is I'm doing a sort of edge highlight um, onto the areas where the light would hit, but I'm doing little wiggles uh, into the areas where the light would hit the most. And I'm also doing a couple of scratches, um, little lines going into the model and into the areas where I want to show that this is not a nice, neatly painted piece of war gear. I'm showing that this is scuffed and chipped and pot marked. And each of these like, scratchy highlights is showing off some slight imperfections 
uh, into the surface of the model where the light is going to create some depth and as you can see here picking out the edges of the spikes on the armor and going around heighting every single edge on this for the most part because a lot of this is going to get hit by the light at some point and it allows us to uh, maintain visual detail when something like this layered goth armor panel has quite a lot of different texture and uh, shape definition that requires pulling into focus and you can do as much or as little as you like uh, with this uh, I go quite heavy with this but it is entirely up to you uh, how much you'd like to do and as you can see putting a fair bit of celestial grey into this is uh, leading to this being uh, quite uh, stark in terms of contrast and is really allowing all those different shapes to pop. And here is the armor with that step now complete. I really think that the purple added in really gives some nice interesting highlights. For the last highlight I'm coming in with pure celestial grey and with this I'll be picking out the sharpest details and corners and doing a few dot highlights and scratches on the model. So I'm going to start out with the vertical edges of the spikes on his armor and then I'm going to highlight the underside of any chips, dents and scratches that have been uh, put in place by the sculptor in the plastic. Uh, I'm probably going to be looking at doing some uh, line scratches, some really thin, so thinning down the paint a little and using uh, short quick motions uh, with the tip of your brush to do very thin lines to uh, scratch into the armor plate to reinforce the idea of what we've been doing in the previous step and I'm making sure to pick out all the dots and rivets and screws and nuts and bolts and anything like that that are basically just a dot highlight uh, just tapping the uh, the tip of the brush uh, to those bits on the model and uh, making sure that we're picking out any of the sharpest corners and edges. We don't want to do a proper full edge highlight with this because it will end up looking far too white uh, but we're just looking now to pick a few bits of areas where the colour is going to be the strongest where it's lightest getting hit by the light and those absolute maximum reflexes that you want to decide to do. Again just like in the uh, the previous steps of um, been doing exactly the same thing on the pistol, picking out those sharpest upper corners, picking up any uh, rivets and divots and if you're feeling really brave you can uh, come and do some very thin uh, scratches. If you feel like the line you've done is too thick, quickly rinse your brush off and feather it backwards into a, into a thinner line or if your previous colour is still wet on the palette uh, you can come in and uh, blend the two together or layer over it to uh, hide your, the mistake. As you can see I've gone quite heavy on the shoulder pad uh, as I've gone for a very stylized finish here. With that the black armor panel on this Goss Boy is now complete. As you can see the purple and light grey colors have really allowed for a nice desaturated black whilst giving some color variation that you don't often see when people paint black armor. It allows your Goss Boy to stand at the table and the armor still reads as a black paint. So if you like this tutorial, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and you get further tutorials in your video feed just like this one. So, until next time folks.